nuclear war. In our time, we foolishly believe it to be a threat of the past. On the day after tomorrow, nuclear war devastates the globe with pure, fiery future shock. This is the saga of monsters unleashed and a hero unchained. Hercules Unbound. He watches his masterwork unfold. Beyond borders, through mountains, over horizons. From the middle of nowhere to the streets of Athens. He watches. He watches and admires. His is a face hewn to idealized proportions. Proud, true, rock hard. But perhaps, his face is a bit too idealized. The jaw is perhaps a fraction too square. The iron neck a tad too thick. And in the fiery pride of place which burns in those piercing eyes, might we not detect a hint of madness? Smiling, Ares returns his attention to his map. He only dimly hears the new voice from the doorway. The voice is Commander Antione inquiring on new orders. Ares informs that Commander D'Angelo intends to redistribute his forces. But Ares is not the sort of god to just inform. For Ares, information is either strategy or a weapon. Night Among the Ruins It has been three days since Kevin befriended Hercules. Now they have arrived on the burned Italian coast. Hercules warns the survivors will suffer even more before Ares is finished with his game. Time for a flashback. Oh, I just love flashbacks. I haven't done a flashback yet. Wish me luck. Hercules recounts how Ares tricked him centuries ago. During a feast on Olympus, he remembers how Ares drugged his wine. It was while impaired, Hercules was attacked by some henchmen. For a while, Hercules was more than a match for them until he finally succumbed. When he awoke, the man-god of might was changed to an island. That was, until, Ares saw fit to release him for some nefarious reason. Kevin asks why passing ships did not rescue him. Hercules says Ares likely cast a spell of invisibility over the island. Before he can say more, Hercules and Kevin are jumped by minotaurs. Kevin utilizes his makeshift slingshot to repel his attacker. Hercules dispatches his opponents as well. Afterward, Hercules ponders how Kevin wields a slingshot better than a sighted person. Indeed, there is something about Kevin both special and strange. With Kevin's horse down, Hercules carries Kevin to Rome, a city of which the man God knows nothing. Two hours later, Hercules wonders if, indeed, the road leads to Rome. There is nothing but ash and ruins. Hercules advises Kevin to not let Basil eat anything here. Kevin says that his dog will not eat anything uncooked. Wait. A dog just found a fully cooked steak among the ruins of Rome? Anyway. It is then, our duo hears fighting nearby. It's a trap. Ares announces his newest and greatest war beast. The Smasher. Paul Jason Momoa. I think we've found his next big role in his favorite color. The Smasher reduces Hercules into the biggest bitch since Kevin Sorbo. Basil distracts the Smasher long enough for his blind master to strike. However, Hercules and Kevin then notice that Basil has taken an unusual interest in the Smasher's corpse. Then the truth hits Kevin like a freight train. The Smasher is, in fact, Kevin's father. Ares watches. And admires. I am Brother I. And join me as I continue to chronicle. The Great Disaster.